Hey everybody, I'm joined here today with Dr. Nikki Barber over at Better Life. You can find them at betterlifecarolinas.com. And so we're here to talk about their treatments for ED along with some of the main causes and questions that patients usually have. So doctor, thanks so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Great, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I just wanted to start things off by asking about you know your experience working with these patients and what got you into these treatments and being able to help them with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I started my um, age management longevity practice about 20 years ago, and a good deal of the focus was on hormone replacement and cardiovascular health. And back then, we really, the only treatment that we had for erectile dysfunction were Cialis, uh, Viagra, and that group of medications and hormonal balance. But there is still a group that were still suffering um, and they were at all age groups. I was pretty astounded by the number of young men. And by that, I would mean 20s and 30s who were really suffering, having a difficult time talking about it, not really, it was not being addressed by their family physicians um, and got interested in, you know, well, what else can we do? And about, I guess it must have been about five years ago, um, I had read about shockwave therapy for erectile dysfunction. And by coincidence, I was at a meeting with my husband, who is about 10 years older than I am, is diabetic, has high blood pressure, and was suffering from erectile dysfunction. We actually got him one treatment while we were at the meeting. <laughs> He was my guinea pig, and he definitely improved after one treatment. Um, I was really interested in it. I got dug into what literature there was at that time, which was not a lot, but was impressive. And so it, it all kind of went from there. So we've really kind of expanded what we are doing to treat erectile dysfunction to include um, a low energy shockwave therapy. Yeah, that's great to hear. And, and I can appreciate you taking your, your personal experience and being able to help, you know, other men that are dealing with that. And I wanted to ask too, I know with, you know, these treatments and really ED in general doesn't get talked about very much between most men and their primary care physicians, like you mentioned, what do you feel like that is? Well, a lot of doctors, I think if they don't have a good solution, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not going to ask the question, number sure. one. Um, I mean, I went to medical school almost 40 years ago and uh, we didn't talk about sex at all. I don't think that's changed that much. I think maybe over the last couple of years it has, but um, I don't think we were well trained as far as what questions to ask and then what responses that we could possibly have. So I think that's a lot of it. And I think also that men underappreciate how common it is. They feel like if it's happening to them, they're the only guy that happens to them. Right. And they're not gonna sit around, you know, playing pool or having a few beers with their buddies and talk about not being able to maintain an erection. I mean, they're, they're just not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that is changing some and um, because of this field, and, and I think as part of the aging process, we realize that our sexual health and vitality is a key part of healthy aging, that it's opened up the conversations more. Absolutely. And I, I completely agree. I think for a lot of men, they do assume that they're the only ones dealing with it. But I mean, you can look at how much money goes into the marketing and everything for Viagra and Cialis and see like how prevalent of a problem it actually is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And, you know, the good thing about the marketing, I mean, there are a lot of things I don't like about the marketing, but it, it definitely, you know, it, it increases awareness mm -hmm. and that there are some treatments available. Um, the nice thing about the uh, shockwave therapy, and we also do um, PRP um, and exosome uh, mm -hmm or penile injection, we're just starting to do Botox injection, um, is the le less medication, the better is sort of our motto. So if we can get the body to repair itself, that's better, right? Um, particularly in, in younger patients. So that's what we are always trying to accomplish. 
definitely. And as I understand these treatments with the shockwave and doing the PRP and all of that, those are more of a longer term sustainable solution versus those medications are really just a temporary fix, right? Yes and no. So if you're taking Cialis or Viagra, of course you have to take it mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have to take it in anticipation mm -hmm. of needing it. So that there's that factor. Um, the uh, Cialis, Viagra, they work better on an empty stomach, which a lot of times doesn't happen. You know, you take your date or your spouse out to dinner and then you go home and you're ready to have sex and then you take it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work as well. Um, whereas if you've had the other treatments, you don't have to be thinking about it, right? And you don't have to take a medication. Now, we do have some patients who are we're doing both for. Um, you know, taking like a daily Cialis. So what that does is increase blood flow everywhere, heart, brain, penis. And they've had treatments like the shockwave treatments to improve the blood flow specifically to the penis. So everybody's going to be a little different and everyone's protocol is going to be a little different. But in young men, in general, um, we can get away with not having to use medication after doing the treatments. And do you find that the patients that respond to it the most are usually the ones that have something like diabetes or hypertension that's caused, you know, somewhat of a blood flow issue for them? I, I would say that's not necessarily true. I'll, I'll tell you, it's so crazy. So I, I had the first actual treatment machine in the state of South Carolina and the first in the state of North Carolina. I have two offices mm -hmm. and Everything's not about money, but I had paid for the machine in one month. That's how many treatments we did. And wow. I was shocked at how successful the treatments were. I would, and this sounds crazy, but I would say the treatments are between 85 and 90% effective. Hmm. The, the patients where we have run into a roadblock, hmm. one, um, we had we have had three patients that were uh, quadriplegic. We've had three of those that did get improvement, and one did not. The one that did not did have some other health problems on top of it. The other is men who have had their prostate removed for prostate cancer, and it has resulted in impotence, and they have not seeked any treatment for an extended period of time. Mm. Those are very difficult patients to get it turned around. Um, and I, I tell men, and we now have, if we know that someone's going to have their prostate removed, we do a kind of a preventative protocol uh, before they have the prostate removed. And then as soon as we can afterwards to really keep that tissue mm. vibrant and, and well uh, supplied with blood and it's not just the blood, it's also the testosterone, all of it helps to support the collagen and elasticity and nerves in the area. So if we can get ahead of that before someone has their prostate removed, um, we're, we're seeing much better results with that. And there is some data out there to support that too. Yeah, definitely. That's good to know. And um, I think, you know, one thing patients might worry about with hearing, you know, shockwave or hearing PRP or anything is if there's going to be any pain or side effects. Yeah. With it. Can, you, can you talk yeah. to that? Yeah. Um, well, I have a friend who does what I do, a, a guy, and he's given himself his own treatments and his own injections without any local, but he lives in Texas. So, you know, they're weird down there, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we um, definitely uh, give the patient of the option of applying a local anesthetic to mm -hmm. the penis. That works great in 99.9% .9 of the cases. I think the less than 1% it doesn't is more that the patient is nervous. Mm -hmm. And so after the first treatment and they realize it's a weird feeling, it's like sort of like if you took a rubber band and flicked it, mm -hmm. um, that's kind of what it feels like. Um, and we can like rub it on their skin before and give them a, an idea of what it's going to feel like. Of course, yeah. the genitals are more sensitive than your arm. Mm -hmm. um, but in both cases, um, I think the comfort level is, is pretty good. And it, it's the anxiety that's the worst part for people. Mm -hmm. But we try to, to really get people relaxed. And, um, and again, I, I think 
a little bit of uh, anxiety goes away after the first treatment. Yeah, definitely. And how long do you typically find that it takes, you know, after they do these treatments before they start seeing some relief from the ED? Yeah. Um, well, my husband, I think, was kind of an exception. Sometimes we do see improvement after one treatment, but we, in our practice, we never do fewer than six treatments. Mm -hmm. I had kind of made that decision at the beginning. I didn't want somebody to get two treatments and not get better, and they would be out telling everybody it doesn't work. I mean, the, all of the studies, so I just recently presented at a medical meeting last year and presented on both um, shockwave therapy for ED and PRP for um, erectile dysfunction. And when I was asked to do it, I said, well, gosh, five years ago, there were only like two articles. I don't know if I can present. Well, now there are a lot of articles, particularly on shockwave therapy. And then no one does fewer than six treatments. Mm -hmm. So if someone say is more complicated, let's say they have high blood pressure, they're a type two diabetic, they um, are not responding to Cialis, I would say 12 treatments minimum mm -hmm. um, so that we can really see results. Now, the, the repair and all starts almost immediately, but really the optimum time to for everything to be repaired is probably about three months. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the kind of machine you have and how many treatments and how long the treatments last. Uh, those are the variables that are hard to control. Mm -hmm. um, but in some patients, they see improvement in, you know, one or two treatments. We also require them as much as we can to use a vacuum pump twice a day after that. Do you know what I'm talking about? To kind of cause the penis to be enlarged, increasing the blood flow, bringing more growth factors into the area. We think that that really helps to get the repair going. Yeah, I can imagine that's really able to kind of, you know, speed up or at least encourage. Speed up, right, problem. right. I mean, a vacuum pump itself has some data supporting just that in some groups of patients can improve erectile dysfunction. But when you start to couple it with other things, then we definitely see improvement. Mm -hmm. And then I know I'm sure this varies from patient to patient, but do you find there's usually a certain amount of time that the treatments last before they start? you know, needing another one or is there, there's not really any restriction on them coming back in and getting more. No, uh -uh. Um, I mean, I generally, I think two years is about the longest we've seen somebody go. Hmm. Um, some men don't want to chance it. So they come back at, you know, three or six months after. Um, but in general, I would say most men over 40 are coming back, um, uh, within a two year period. The other thing is, you know, a lot of younger men, it's not so much disease, it's more psychogenic or, you know, it's once it happens, then, you know, you kind of lose your edge, you worry about it, you get anxious about it and it becomes this vicious cycle. So in those younger men, if we can treat them with the shockwave therapy and they can perform, it kind of puts that psychogenic factor a little bit on the back burner. So they don't come back, a lot of them, for a, a long time because that was really the problem. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that was the only problem, but it's so complicated that, you know, you, it's hard to separate out the physical, physiologic, and psychologic components of erectile dysfunction or any sexual dysfunction, really. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And I know you mentioned that it is more difficult to get results when a patient has gone a long time, especially after you know surgery or something. When do you feel like they should really be seeking professional help for this? Is this just when they start seeing a consistent issue? Right away. The sooner, the better. The sooner, the better. It, it just, I mean, and again, part of that is the psychogenic component, because then you have to undo that. And also whatever the um, physical process is that's causing the problem you know, we want to jump on right away. And you had asked me about diabetics earlier. Certainly don't want to say that you can allow your diabetes to be out of control and that this will work. That's, we, we actually, part of when we see a new patient, we do a blood panel to check their testosterone level, vitamin D level, diabetic markers, because if we, we want to get that controlled um, to help us get better results. So, um, 
if you're an out of control diabetic and you're having, um, or even a mildly out of control and you're having erectile dysfunction, you need to get treatment sooner rather than later. And things will turn around a lot faster. But, you know, I think that kind of makes sense. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, if you're, and I tell men this too, you know, if they've gotten a divorce or their spouse has, um, or their partner has died and they're not sexually active, and they're thinking about maybe getting back in the world. Now's the time to do something about it. Yeah. Um, because a lot of men that we see have dipped their toe into the dating world, had a sexual encounter. It didn't go well. And then they're, you know, they're completely thrown off after that. So, you know, um, it's kind of if, if you if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And that's true with other parts of our body, too. Definitely. Yeah, and it sounds like you can really use this as a preventative measure too. You don't necessarily have to wait until it's, you know, completely Correct. dysfunctional. Correct. Yeah. And that's, you know, we we try to get people to understand that, that, you know, it's only going to help. It's going to regenerate. I mean, it, if you look at the data, the number of growth factors that are recruited to the area after a treatment are 30, 40 different growth factors to the area, which is pretty astounding. And just setting that up to start to regenerate that tissue, no matter where, is good. Definitely. And PRP has been used for a long time, right? On all different parts of the body, right? So all the different parts. A new, yeah. a new treatment. Yeah, actually, I mean, the orthopedic guys, I think, probably did it first. Periodontist for gums, um, then plastics, dermatology for skin. Um, and then it's just sort of morphed into all different things. Um, and, you know, we use it for women, for an O-shot, we use it on the skin, so lots of different things. Yeah, well, that's really exciting. And for patients that are, you know, really ready to take that first step and, you know, come in for a consultation, what would be the best way for them to get in contact with you? So on our website, um, you can actually make an appointment. There's a number there to call to um, speak to one of our team members. Um, and we do see people from all over the country. Um, you know, when people come in, uh, if they're going to get those treatments, we work with them to try to get the treatments as close together as possible. I did want to mention one other thing. And I know uh, you asked me what I want to talk about, and I knew we were talking about this, but th this is kind of one of my, um, I don't know, something that really people don't talk about much, Peroni's disease. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I've heard a little bit about that. But yeah, if you want to, to talk about it, sure. Yeah, it's um, very common. And again, that's another instance where I believe men think, you know, I'm the only guy who has this problem. And, and it has resulted, it's where the penis is no longer straight when it's erect. And it can be bent even to this extreme, even more than this, because of scarring that pulls it from an erect straight position, which can be one, embarrassing, to painful for the man and for the partner uh, during intercourse. Um, the conventional treatments, medication injected into the scar um, or medication taken orally are not particularly effective. Um, the, it can result from generally trauma of some sort, you know, during intercourse, just things not going the right way and the penis gets bent and then it, it basically is scarred. Um, and so what we found is doing the shockwave therapy and we use a different probe to direct it right onto the scar. And we inject PRP after the third treatment is pretty crazy. I mean, we have definitely seen improvement. Now I'm not going to say it is a hundred percent cure, but our goal is to get it to the point where the man feels like he can have intercourse and he enjoys it and his partner enjoys it and it is less of an issue. So I really want to say, you know, we, there are things we can do about this and um, it doesn't all involve because the medication that is injected into the penis is very painful and it doesn't always work. Um, I'm not saying this always works, but we've had very good success with it. And, you know, as we were talking about at the beginning, you know, I, I'm hoping that men start to be able to talk about more things that are 
personal and sexual because we're learning so much. Um, I mean, I, like I mentioned, I've been doing this 20 years and the tools in our toolbox now compared to 20 years ago are very impressive. And probably 10 years from now, it's going to be even more impressive. So yeah. I, I was reading earlier because I knew we were doing this. It's not on the market yet, but there is an over-the-counter topical, so some kind of cream, and I could not find out what's in it, but it is going to be sold for erectile dysfunction. I have no idea what that is. It's not on the market yet, um, but that's just one example of some things that you know will be on the horizon anyway. Definitely. No, I think it's so important that we're able to, you know, talk about it a little bit more. And I think the more that we're able to, more and more men will be able to, you know, just come forward about it. And I think for a lot of them, they just assume that if they're dealing with it, their options are medication. And if that doesn't work, mm -hmm. pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, that's all that they have. That's so. all they have. Yeah. And, you know, we have, um, I mean, we're probably 40% female, 60% in my practice. And I have young women who have experienced being with young men, I mean, men, their 20s and 30s, and the men have been experiencing erectile dysfunction. And I think it's more common than it had been. I mean, just given my patient population and the reports that I get from young people, they're also, since COVID, is a relationship with erectile dysfunction and uh, men who have had COVID. Um, so we're seeing more of it than we did before even. Um, so it's just, you know, it's a, it's a real thing. And, and for some men, it can be the first indication that there is some other disease processes like heart disease, high right. blood pressure, diabetes. It can be the first thing that presents. And so from a health perspective, um, it's very important. Yeah, definitely. So even as frustrating as it can be to deal with, I mean, it could be a good early warning sign that you need to go get. Absolutely. Out. Absolutely. Um, so our website is betterlifecarolinas.com, Carolinas, plural. Our phone number is 843-577-8484. And um, we'd be happy if we do a phone consultation to see if it's a good fit and if it's something that, you know, you're interested in. So um, I'm hoping, you know, that we can help some more people out there um, to get that bothersome physiologic problem under control definitely all right well awesome well yeah i really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today and share the education on those treatments so thank you so much for doing that yep thank you so much for having me i appreciate it yeah, of course have a great rest of your day dr barber you too take care